Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And boy, are you in luck today if you just bought your microscope and soldering gear, because I'm going to show you how to take off and put back on some of the smallest components you're going to encounter. All right, let's take it back to a time that we can all remember. That time might be even right now for you. At some point, you made the decision and said, hey, I'm gonna learn how to do micro solder. I'm gonna learn how to diagnose these boards. It's gonna happen. So you did all your research, you found all the gear, and we're not talking about crappy stuff. You took your time, all right? You got everything in front of you, and you're like, all right, let's do this. You go in, you grab your nice new fancy tweezers, and you immediately destroy the smallest little component on there. You're like, that's not how I saw people do it in the videos. Every time I saw somebody do it in the video, they just pulled it right off. It didn't seem like that big of a deal, but for some reason, I'm literally ripping the pads out from under it. Or even better yet, let's say that you got it off. Like, no big deal. You're like, Psh, dude, no big deal. I got that component off. You put it back down there blows away you lost it all right these are things that really plague a lot of new micro solders and today we're going to go over super small two jointed maybe three jointed little components on the board and i'm going to show you how to not only take them off so that you can use them on another board but i'm going to show you how to put them back on too so let's go ahead and jump on over to the microscope we'll take a look see over here and we'll see what we can come up with today all right, so let's see if we can find a little candidate. Well, first off, let's take this let's take this camera out of here. We don't need to be keeping that on there. There's another one here. This happens when you just pull something out the donor box for a video. Anyway, let's see here. Oh, there we go. We got some fun stuff. We got some diodes. We got resistors, probably a few capacitors, some little ICs, an FPC connector. But today, what we're going to be focusing on are small little two-jointed things. Okay, stuff like that, stuff like this little bad boy here. And it's going to transfer up to the bigger stuff like this. It's all going to work the exact same. Okay, so we're actually going to start with the smallest one. Okay, we're going to do the smallest thing we can find on here because, I mean, that's got to be the hardest, right? The smallest, most intricate little piece of, you know, component, whatever it is. All right, so... How are we going to do this, Justin? How are we going to take this off without destroying it? First and foremost, we need to know what we're going to do it with. All right, We're going to do this with the hot air station. We are not doing this with the soldering station, which I probably should turn on. Because we're going to use it at some point. When we take this off, we're actually going to be using the hot air station. I've got my quick 861DW set up to 345 degrees centigrade at 70 airflow. Um, and I only kind of give that information just because a lot of people ask for it. Um, truly, you know, a, a whole nother video worth temperatures on that, on these things are kind of irrelevant as long as it's over the melting point of what you're working with. But that's a whole nother thing to talk about. Um, but anyway, like I said, 345 at 70 airflow, um, is what we're going to be using today. Um, we are going to be using a little bit of flux. And we are going to be using a soldering iron just a little bit, but not for not for too much of it. Okay, so how are we going to get this bad boy off? 345. We're going to come down here and we're going to aim directly at the component. Okay, and we're not going to rip the component off. We're not going to bend it, twist it, torque it, whatever you think you're going to do, bop it. I don't know. We're just going to heat it up. Okay, as we're heating it up, I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm gonna hold on to the little joint there and I'm just gonna kinda of put a little pressure on it. That's it, okay? If you watched my video, I believe it was, uh, I think it had something to do with coconut in the name, it was about taking EMI shields off. You're gonna see this fundamental technique that I used last time work again here and it's gonna work pretty flawlessly. So I'm gonna grab this little doodad right here. That's it. Pick them right up. I'm just going to set them over here in the FPC connector as like a little cubby kind of thing. And you saw that, right? Literally one, two, three. It's easy. It just came right off. I didn't sweat. I didn't struggle. It's not that big a deal. Okay. So now that we got it off and we didn't rip the pads, and that literally only took a few seconds, bearing in mind 
thermal mass, you know, if there's a huge ground plane or something under there, you're probably not going to, you know, sometimes they come off a little later, sometimes they come off a little earlier. The key is to let it come off on its own. You see how I kind of just, I just grabbed it, I pulled up just a little bit, you know, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it, I'm not doing anything crazy, I'm not just grabbing it and, you know, putting all the, you know, hand pressure I can on it. Just want to, doop, and just kind of hold it there, just enough not to let it go, and I lift up. And as soon as it's melted to, or, you know, I'm sorry, as soon as the uh, the solder has gotten to a point where it's at its melting point, it just lets go. And you can just point the heat away, and it's not that big a deal, okay? So now that we've got it off, let's go ahead and put it back on, okay? And this is actually just as easy and just as satisfying to do, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn it, actually, in reverse and we're gonna reality this thing. Um, we're gonna be using 6337 solder today, which is a eutectic alloy. It's got a melting point, not a melting range. Um, that would be a non-eutectic alloy, okay? And we can talk about that later. Um, that's a whole whole thing on its own. So, let's see if it doesn't focus right. Maybe I should hold something on it. All right, so how do we reality this thing? We're going to take a little bit of flux. Mm -hmm. Looks like I moved my little component there. Don't need a lot, just enough for the little area. We're going to take our soldering iron. We're going to take our 6337 right here and we're just gonna go over that little spot. Now, like I was saying, depending on whether this thing's got a large ground plane or not, you know, you gotta pick your tip accordingly, but for the most part, these small things kinda universally work with most irons that'll fit down in there. You generally wanna pick the largest one that you can use for that job without disturbing other components as it's gonna have a little more throughput on it. Um, now that we've got the alloy on there, and this is really cool, right? So. The alloy we have on there right now, that 6337, has a melting point, whereas all the components around it have lead-free ROHS, which actually has a melting range, right? So this is going to melt and sink into its spot well before anything else has a chance to be disturbed. You see why we use that other alloy now. All right, so next step here is just going to be to grab the little component we were working with. We're gonna set that bad boy back on there, and it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. The deal is, as long as both joints, or you know, up to three, because after three we're looking at, you know, grid arrays. Um, as long as all the joints are touching at least some portion of the pad that they're meant to go on, once surface tension has its way with things, it's just gonna pull it directly where it needs to go. So you're not gonna have to worry about that. And I'm gonna show you right now. Now. Interesting to note, I'm going to lower the airflow. Why? Because a lot of people complain, hey, I put my thing on there, I put the hot air back on it, poof, it blew it away, it was gone, there's no more. And I didn't have another one, you know, you ruined it for me, Justin. No, we're gonna lower the airflow. Since we're gonna lower the airflow, that's gonna put less pressure on the component itself, and it's gonna give it time to actually heat up and for it to grab and start pulling down. So we were at 70, let's go ahead and do half of that. So. If 70 was right around half of full airflow, it's a little bit a little bit over, but if let's just go ahead and round around here. If 70 was half, let's do half of half, which would be a quarter, and let's see what happens then. Or are we gonna blow this component away? Well, cool thing about it is we also have tools, okay? I've got my tweezers here and we're gonna use those to corral it in case it does slide to the left or slide to the right. You see what I'm saying? So here we go. We're at 30 at 345, and we've still got some residual flux down there. We should be good to go. I mean, you know, if you wanna if you wanna add some more just for you know being thorough, you can as well. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, if you're afraid of moving it, just put a little bit of flux under it. It'll flow into it. Not a big deal. So here we go. I'm gonna come down here just to make sure I can corral it. And you see it's not going anywhere. We're just heating it up. 
as soon as that joint melts it's going to start grabbing but notice that this one grabs but none of these other ones are really changing phase see that I just nudged it I corralled it right in there and it zoop, jumped in there watch my surface tension video so anyway it's it's pretty universal as long as you have a little bit of solder under there or you know I mean you know, an idea that I'm having right now I mean you know as long as you have solder on the joints of the component as well you know or even by themselves it should technically change into that other phase wet grab onto that component and as you saw there you're good to go and that was literally one two three that's not even that big a deal okay so I really hope you learned something and I hope that you know me blasting you with these fundamentals over and over and over you know is is getting through to you and I'm gonna keep at it you know what I mean we've still got to do FPC connectors we've got to do BGAs I mean there's all kinds of sensitive you know high density low density components we can do microphones you name it we're gonna go over it but you should be able to do any kind of two and three jointed stuff now it's super easy the deal is you want to get it off as quickly as possible so you're just gonna hold it let it drop off on its own at that point you know the joint was just ready to go so I'm gonna quit talking because I can go about all this all day long hope you have a wonderful day um, don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already go over there bing hit that notification bell and yeah I'll catch you next time don't forget guys if you're interested in any of the tools I use check out the description below I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair I also have a patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high quality content